Hey there, everybody. So we just wrapped watching the King and Queen of the Ring from Saudi Arabia. And I'm here to do my review on what I thought about the pay-per-view. Now, there's kind of a lot to get into. But first and foremost, I got to pat myself on the back because I got a clean sweep in my predictions. Yeah. All right. It hasn't happened in a while, guys. I need a win. This is the only win I've got like this whole month. So let me enjoy this win. Um, clean sweep. All of my predictions were right but anyways let's get to the show let's talk about what went down shocking moments best moments of the night and was the pay-per-view any good well let's get to it i want to kick things off with the match that started off the show and that is becky lynch defending her women's world championship against Liv morgan now going into this match i feel like a lot of people were sort of torn i saw some people saying like okay Liv is probably gonna win a lot of her fans have really been pushing for Liv morgan to win she's got some hardcore fans right and then on the other hand, people were like, Becky's definitely winning this. Like, hey, there ain't, a, there ain't a shot that Liv Morgan is winning. Well, on Monday, it was really that promo to me that was very, very telling. When I saw that promo and I just saw the way that Liv Morgan was portraying herself, the way that she carried herself in that promo, I felt felt like this was the time to put the belt on Liv Morgan. And the reason I say that is because you can't keep getting behind and getting behind Liv Morgan and then for there not to be anything to come of it. And so it felt like, okay, we already know what Becky Lynch is like as a champion. We've seen it, been there, done that multiple times. That's why she's Becky Lynch. That's why she's the man, because she's really freaking great at what she does. But We've already seen it a whole lot. Now, with Liv Morgan, we saw her run as SmackDown Women's Champion, and it really wasn't the greatest. There could have been a lot more, of course, but when she won the Money in the Bank briefcase and when she won the title later on that night at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, it felt like peak Liv Morgan. And I think that this could be the run that we wanted to see when we first saw Liv Morgan win the Money in the Bank. So I hope that Liv Morgan finally gets the run that we have been waiting for. Also, big difference between then and now is that Vince McMahon was running things then. Now, Triple H is running things. Who knows what that creative around Liv Morgan is going to look like. So right now, it's looking good. So we go into this match with her and Becky Lynch here tonight. Well, technically this morning. <laughs> this morning, technically. And what I liked about this was because it was the opening match, as you all know, the opening match tends to have a little bit of a different pace, or at least it has to have a different type of pace. It has to be, you know, really fun, get the crowd going. And I think that both Liv and Becky did just that. They came into this match feeling like they really, really disliked each other. And so therefore, it made the match more entertaining. And seeing Liv just like try to find any single way possible to get her hands on Becky Lynch, it felt like she was really, really scrappy during this. Like she knew she had to pull out every tool that she had in her arsenal in order to get the win over Becky Lynch. And there were some good moments th throughout this match, but I feel like they kept the energy going. But let's fast forward to the finish of this because this is the one where a lot of people either saw this coming or um, they expected it, whatever. So Dominic Mysterio. Now Dominic Mysterio, as we know, has been lovingly devoted to Rhea Ripley. That is his mommy. That's his everything. We all know it. And so <clears throat> The last couple of weeks on Raw, we've gotten a couple of moments between Dominic and Liv Morgan. And there have been a lot of fans that have already theorized that, hey, maybe there's something going on between Liv and Dom. Is there? M maybe. Well, Dominic Mysterio comes out and I'm thinking, oh my God, is he going to help out Liv Morgan? Well, he did. However, however... He did so in a way that made it look like he wasn't trying to help Liv Morgan. So he threw a chair into the ring and Becky Lynch was supposed to grab it. But Becky Lynch was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to use your help. And I'm not going to do that to try and defeat Liv Morgan in that way. However, 
Liv Morgan was definitely down to use the chair. And so Liv Morgan hits the DDT on the chair on Becky Lynch, and then she hits the Oblivion. One, two, three, she gets the victory. And of course, at that point, we saw Dominic was like distracting the referee. He even distracted Becky Lynch a little bit too. So Dominic Mysterio inadvertently, and I put this in uh, quotations for those listening on the audio version, he inadvertently uh, basically cost Becky Lynch the match and ended up helping Liv Morgan. So it makes you wonder, well, did he do this on purpose? I think a lot of people are feeling in their gut that the answer is yes. He most likely did this on purpose while masking it to look like something else. So after this match later on in the show, we saw Becky Lynch was super pissed off at how things unfolded. And she basically said that she's going to talk to Pierce, the general manager of Raw, and she is going to invoke her rematch clause. So um, we're most likely going to get a rematch between her and Liv Morgan. And I'm wondering when exactly Dominic is going to, you know, side with Liv Morgan. When is he going to start doing her bitty? When is he going to start? How do I say this? When is he going to come out that he's technically on Liv Morgan's side? I have a feeling that's going to be happening on Raw, possibly. We'll see, but this is going to be good because I cannot wait for Dominic to essentially be used as a pawn between the eventual feud that we get between Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley, given their whole history and their on and off um, feud and former tag team. I mean, there's so much with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. It's kind of nuts, but I can't wait to see Dominic get used as a pawn in all of this. It's going to be exciting. All right. So anyways, Becky Lynch, Liv Morgan, enjoyable match, good opener with a surprising win. Although not to me because I predicted it. All right. Sorry guys. I need it. I needed this win. <laughs> I needed I needed this win this month. All right, so let's keep it going. I want to go ahead and get into this next match. And this next match, in my opinion, was match of the night. Yes, that is the Intercontinental Championship, Sami Zayn, defending against Bronson Reed and Chad Gable. So there is a whole lot to say about this right now, and I don't even know where to begin. So first of all, let's start with the crowd chants. Of course, they were going insane for Sammy. That was expected. Now, Chad Gable, this warms my freaking heart, everybody. Chad Gable was getting the Kurt Angle, you suck chants. And he had already been getting them on Raw, but he hadn't been getting them during his entrance. And he got them during his entrance today. And you guys all know that was Kurt Angle's thing. So the fact that now it's sort of living on through another Olympian, through somebody we've, uh, you know, aligned a lot with Chad, sorry, with Kurt Angle in Chad Gable. And so it's really cool that they're carrying that through. And I don't know, it's fun. It warms my heart up. Anyways, the match itself, dude. If you didn't watch this, please go out of your way to watch this match. If you don't want to watch this pay-per-view, if you didn't care about this or whatever, I urge you to watch one match, and this one is it. There were so many cool moments in it. I don't even know where to begin. I'm going to highlight a few just to throw it out there. Okay, Sami Zayn hit a blue thunder bomb on Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed did this like sick suicide dive. We saw a superplex with all three guys. And the holy shit moment for me, at least, was when Chad Gable suplexed both Sami Zayn and Bronson Reed, guys. And that one was really effing cool because Chad Gable, as we know, is a freaking badass, right? We know that. He's a great wrestler. We know that. But... When he does those suplexes, he always does them so nicely, right? He just, it's very nice to watch him do. And the bridge afterwards is like, ooh, it's to die for. It's like a thing that when you see a good suplex, like as wrestling fans, it just makes your heart grow bigger is what I'm saying. Hearts coming out of my eyeballs and everything. And so doing it on two guys, especially with one of them being the size of Bronson Reed, 
Well, my friends, that one is really going to get you. It really is going to get you. That was my favorite part of this whole freaking match. But there was just a lot that went down um, with this. I'm trying to make sure that I don't forget any other one. Oh, the double ankle lock spot where they both did uh, ankle locks on each other. That was cool. All three guys. All three guys. Then, oh, the moonsault spot. There was a moment where Bronson Reed hits a moonsault, but Sami Zayn moves out of the way. So all of a sudden, Reed's laying there on the mat. And then out of nowhere from the other side, we see Chad Gable come in. And freaking Chad Gable gets him with a moonsault. So this was so much fun. Please go out of your way to check this one out. Sami Zayn, uh, he retains. He gets the victory. And, oh, I didn't even talk about the Otis portion in all of this. So the way that Sami Zayn got this win is essentially kind of through the help of Otis. Because Chad Gable was trying to get Otis to hurt Sami Zayn. And when Chad Gable gets in his face, he slaps him, he mistreats him, sort of like what you've been seeing on Raw. And so Otis is going to do it. But, of course... As Chad Gable is holding down Sami Zayn, we end up seeing him come in and clothesline him. So he takes him out. He takes out Chad Gable. So thus taking Chad Gable out of this match. And Sami Zayn is able to finish off this match in the ring, pin Bronson Reed, and retain his Intercontinental Championship. This was so freaking good. All right. Now let's go ahead and get into the king and queen of the ring matches. So these were the finals and we now know, well, who's the winner? So obviously that was the point. All right, let's start with the queen of the ring. We had Lyra Valkyra versus Nia Jax. Now this one here had said from the very beginning, once we found out that this was going to be the finals match was I was not expecting Lyra to win here. I know a lot of people had kind of hoped for it, but I knew that she wasn't going to win. I think that the right story to tell was with Nia Jax because there's a lot there. She defeated Naomi. She defeated Bianca Belair. She defeated Jade Cargill. There's a story there already given the beef that she had with Jade Cargill. On top of that, I think she is a really great opponent for Bailey, who doesn't really have a story going right now. So I feel like they could do something there. So it just screamed in all the right directions that Nia Jax was the one that should be winning this match. Lyra was going to win this match simply by showing what she can do as a performer, showing what she can do in ring. I had said this multiple times, but she just needed to have a Tiffany Stratton Elimination Chamber-like moment where she goes out there and she impresses the fans and she proves because the fans are just getting to know her. If you watched her on NXT, cool. But even then, she wasn't even on NXT that long. She like really sped through the process. Like one minute she's in, the next minute she's defeating Becky Lynch, the next minute she's NXT Women's Champion. Next thing you know, she's on this big card at Stand and Deliver. And then next thing you know, she's drafted to the Raw roster. And the next thing you know, a lot of next thing you knows, but you get it. Uh, all of a sudden, she's in the queen of the ring and she's making it to the finals and performing here in this PLE. So it's very freaking nuts. But basically, you now have Lyra going out there and just trying to show, hey, I'm a good freaking wrestler. And she did just that. She proved not even that she proved. I think that she had already proven that she belonged there to a certain extent, again, because some people didn't really know her work too much. But I think she left people wanting more. I think people were left going with, oh, wow, she could do all of that? That's so cool. She had some really great counters in this match. She made everything a little extra unique. For example, one spot was when Nia Jax tossed her. And instead of her just falling to the ground and being thrown... She like gets thrown and she does a cartwheel and she bounces back. So it's little things like that that kind of go a long way and make the crowd go, ooh, ah. So they, you know, people like that stuff. Um, and so there was a lot of really good moments like that where she had cool counters, like she hit a bulldog. Um, I mean, this was cool. But in the end, Nia Jax hit a gruesome annihilator on Lyra and she defeated her and won and now Nia Jax is going on to SummerSlam to get a title shot uh, I believe it's going to be against Bailey unless you know things change but Nia Jax Bailey again was the direction that I think they should go into because again who else is Bailey feuding with so that's where we're at on that side of things so 
let's go ahead and fast forward to the King of the Ring finals. This was Gunther versus Randy Orton. So this match to me was the one where I was pretty sure Gunther was going to win, but there was a tiny bit of doubt in me where I thought, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong here? A lot of people were making some really good cases for Randy Orton. And I just thought, stick to your gut. It's going to be Gunther. And, but I will tell you this, while I was watching the match, they kept me thinking maybe there is a chance Randy's going to win, especially when a lot of it in the beginning was Gunther being so dominant, dominant against Randy. I started to think, I started to worry. I really did. Like, I wouldn't have minded Randy Orton winning, but I just like to be right. Honestly, I just like to be right. So I had extra stakes <laughs> and with Gunther. And so I started to worry at a certain point because I'm like, damn, Gunther's getting too much of a leg up on Randy Orton. You know, are they are they are they gonna, are they going to swerve us here? Is it going to be Randy? And for the most part, it was Gunther kicking Randy's ass. Like he kept attacking the back because as we know, Randy Orton was out for two years due to the back problems that he had. And Gunther took advantage of that, was chopping him, hitting him in any sort of direction that he could on the back. And so eventually, finally, Randy Orton was able to hit him with a power slam and an RKO out of nowhere and finally got the match to be on a more level footing. And so Randy Orton was able to get a little bit more of his comeuppance during this match here. And um, I really loved that Gunther went into this with a strategy. Like he truly was a mastermind in this match because I'm talking about the back of Randy Orton. That was what he was going after. But he was also going after the knee of Randy and that ended up playing into the finish. Now, the finish I did not love. Because now everybody is like putting question marks around it, even commentary and everybody. Because when um, Gunther rolled up Randy Orton for the finish, his shoulders were not all the way down. In fact, they were pretty high up there. And so a lot of people were like, oh, uh, like, damn, that's how Gunther won. Because that's the thing, like Gunther has been very, very strong when he was intercontinental champion. All of his wins were very, very clean and very clear that he won. And this one, it kind of left you going, well, Gunther did not deserve that. Gunther deserved a definitive, definitive win. I have a feeling they're going to play into this on SmackDown. Randy Orton's probably going to come out and be like, well, my shoulders weren't down and I deserve a title shot. So what say you, Cody Rhodes? And who knows where they go from there. But that's kind of what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this to be the, the doorway into Randy Orton getting himself a match against Cody. Because again, who else is Cody going to wrestle? There aren't that many options right now on that brand. It's a lot more crowded on the raw side of things, which we're going to spend some time talking about momentarily. But um, that's where we're at. Gunther wins. Okay, he is the king of the ring, regardless of how shit went down with the finish. So what we do need to talk about here, though, is a big announcement. Or not really a big announcement. I think we all knew this match was going to happen. But Triple H makes an announcement that at Clash of the Castle, which I will be at, can't wait in Glasgow, Scotland. So keep an eye out for that content and the reviews and all of that good stuff. Um, so let's see. All right. So he makes the announcement that it's going to be Damian Priest defending his World Heavyweight Championship against Drew McIntyre. And that's going to be happening at Clash of the Castle. Now, we all know that is Drew's home country. So this is what we know right now. Drew versus Damian is happening at Clash at the Castle. Gunther has a title shot at SummerSlam. We do not know exactly who is going to be the champion come SummerSlam. That's where things get a little bit foggy. Uh, who the hell knows, right? So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this and I'm going, there's different scenarios because what's something that we want? I'm going to say we still want to see Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. That's got to be something. The problem is it's still up in the air as to when CM Punk is going to be good to go. We still don't really know for sure. 
I'm hoping that we'll see Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk at SummerSlam because that's a SummerSlam match right there. Hell, that's a SummerSlam main event right there. <clears throat> now, keep in mind, we also still have Bash at Berlin that is happening right after at right after SummerSlam. So we have a lot happening here. I'm looking at this. So what the hell is going to happen at Clash of the Castle? Damien versus Drew. I don't want to see Drew lose at Clash of the Castle. <clears throat> However, if he does, I hope it's at the hands of CM Punk, maybe costing him the match against Damian Priest. Because let's say Damian Priest defeats Drew McIntyre at Clash of the Castle. Then that would mean that at SummerSlam, we could see Damian Priest versus Gunther. With Gunther defeating Damian Priest becoming champion at SummerSlam, and then going into Bash at Berlin as champion, okay? Now, if then that leaves open also for SummerSlam, that leaves it open for it to be Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk for him to get revenge on whatever it is that goes down in Clash of the Castle. So that is what I'm expecting. Now, let's try to let's change the scenario now. Let's say Drew McIntyre does defeat Damian Priest at Clash of the Castle and we have a brand new champion there. Then SummerSlam, it would be Drew versus Gunther, which would be hella freaking good, let me tell you. But that's heel on heel. I don't think it would happen. If it does, then see, that one just doesn't really work because I just feel like Again, it would be such a good match, but it's like, who do you go with? I would love to see either one win the title. So I kind of like my other scenario a little bit more. If you guys have a better scenario that I did not think of, think of, or if there's something a lot more obvious floating out there that I haven't grabbed onto, please let me know in the comments. Because um, sometimes my brain, guys, is just working at a thousand miles per hour and I might miss something that's like right in my face. So <laughs> if there's something better, let me know. But right now, as is, I'm predicting Damien defeats Drew at Clash of the Castle with the help of CM Punk. And SummerSlam, we get Punk versus Drew, Priest versus Gunther, with Gunther winning and heading into Bash at Berlin as champion. Oh, and hopefully his challenger at Bash at Berlin is Ilya Dragunov. Stop it, my heart. So that's where I'm at with all of this. So there you go. That's the whole picture right as we stand. All right. So last but not least, let's get into Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul for the WWE Championship. So first and foremost, I think what I want to get at here is I need to give Logan Paul his flowers, guys. This guy, I'll be real with you. Like he really, I was not expecting him to be this good when he first signed with WWE. I was just like, eh, just another celebrity, another influencer getting an opportunity, whatever. But dude has really proven himself. And I feel like I say that every time I watch him wrestle. But like I said, he's had good matches. Of course, remember the match with Roman Reigns in Saudi Arabia. That's the big one that we've been talking about a lot recently. And now he's in there with Cody Rhodes. What I like about Logan Paul is that never once does it look like he's lost. Never once does it look like he's being guided. Like it looks like he knows what he's doing. And given just the small amount of matches that he's had, he shouldn't be this advanced <laughs> at this level, at this kind of a stage. You know, like this is the biggest stage that you're going to get. And so for Logan Paul to just be out there moving about like he's been here for 10 years, it really is sort of uh, something to applaud. Um, and I like that because it doesn't make me feel nervous when I'm watching him. I also want to shout him out for hitting a really nice crossroads. I really liked the crossroads that he hit. But of course, he went for his viral moment again, and he went to the top rope, did his frog splash like he did last time with Cody Rhodes out on the commentary table. That was another one of the, you know, repeat moments for him. But he did really freaking good. But what I liked about this match was I liked that they enhanced the drama. You know, WWE, they love to enhance the dramatics. We see it all the time. They like to make moments like this. And they did a good job with this one because Cody Rhodes, it was basically, so this is where I, where the dramatics really started to go to another level. So Cody Rhodes hmm, hits a Cody cutter on Logan Paul onto the commentary. And it's very cool. They did a really cool camera angle and everything. 
And then the referee is about to count out Logan Paul. But Cody Rhodes instead tells the referee, like, no, he's going to learn a lesson. Like, this is not the way the match is going to end. And I kind of liked that, too, because I like that because it connected to the promo that Cody Rhodes cut on SmackDown, where he was talking about how Logan Paul doesn't have the passion and that Logan Paul is going to learn a lesson and everything that Cody Rhodes said, right? So I feel like he meant what he said, and he proved that in this match by not letting him – by not trying to win with a count out. He wanted to teach this guy a lesson. And for a bit, it kind of seemed like, oh, maybe this is going to hurt Cody Rhodes. The fact that he didn't just take the win there. And we see Logan Paul, of course, he tries to cheat. He brings out the brass knucks. And um, at one point, we end up seeing, God, there was just so much. We see him hit a split, split legged frog splash on Cody Rhodes, goes for the pin. It's a two count. He, um, then Cody hits him with a vertebraker, but the referee at this point is like, he's done. He's not even like, they had a ref spot. He was out. Um, and so he misses a lot of what happens here. And a lot of what happens is Cody gets a visual pin. The referee doesn't see it. Logan hits a low blow. The referee doesn't see it. Logan takes out the brass nuts. Once again, the referee doesn't see it. Logan Paul is about to cheat and use those brass nuts on Cody Rhodes. But instead, the Arab ring announcer, I forget his name, uh, who did the ring announcing, stops Logan Paul. And I honestly didn't mind this spot. It was a cute little moment for, you know, for them to get a nice moments with this guy and it didn't take too much all he did was just pull his legs so he wasn't really like involved for too long so he just went in there stopped him for a brief second and this allowed Cody Rhodes to hit three crossroads and get the win so like I said the dramatics they leveled them up and I enjoyed that so I liked this match too I didn't think it was bad I thought it was really entertaining um it was pretty much what I expected maybe even a little bit more again with how they how they made you think like, damn, what if Logan Paul actually um, defeats Cody Rhodes? I didn't bite during some of these moments, but I I don't know how to explain this. If you don't, I didn't bite into it, but I also, I, I held my breath a little bit, you know, like, like, what if just a tiny bit? I thought, what if, but I mean, like very, very low amount very very low um and so there you go guys that was king and queen of the ring so with that being said i didn't think there was a bad match on today's card i thought all the matches delivered of course match of the night was the intercontinental championship match and i think that's it i think that's all we have to talk about for this review um let me know what you guys thought of the show in the comment section below, how you guys felt about it. And if you enjoyed this video, I welcome you to check out some other of my additional content, if you will. I post a ton of videos here and I'm always live multiple times a week. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, let me recommend a video to you guys. How about you guys check out mm, this one here. No, wait, this one. <laughs> Sorry, I always forget which, which direction I'm supposed to point. But check out this video right over here. Uh, I hope you guys will have a good time. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye, everyone.